Everybody knows that our Hanukkah, the mitzvah of lighting the candles, has to do with Pesum to reveal the miracles. The Gemara says many times, for example, the Gemara we all learn. The Gemara says a person has kiddush ayoyim, only enough money to buy, and he can make kiddush for that day or to light a candle. So ne'er Hanukkah other v'shum pesum anisa. Ne'er Hanukkah is only because pesum anes. The idea of pesum anes is not get to do with Hanukkah. You have to light the candles on the on the twenty amos. Also, if you light your candles higher than twenty amos, it's no good because pesum anisa. Gemara says, when it talks about the halacha of actually lighting the candle, Gemara says, Tarabana, our sages learn, it's a ner Hanukkah, the ner Hanukkah, mitzvah, the mitzvah, mitzvah la nicha al pesach beis machutz. The mitzvah is to light it, al pesach beis machutz, to light it on the outside door facing the outward. Why? So Rashi says, we should pursue minister because of pursue minister. So the mitzvah is to light it outwards. Then the Gemara continues, Shasta Sakana. What happens if it's a time of Sakana? It's a time of danger. So Rashi and Toysis say that what does a time of danger mean? That it was, a, it was a dangerous time for someone to light a menorah for some type of uh, religious persecution. Then what do you do? Manicha Shulchanim Vidaya. You light it in your house Vidaya. Which means. What does this mean? When you light in your house, you die in your house, it means it suggests that you're not having pierce of There's no pierce of because you're not lighting it in the of the Now, normally, the Sakana, for any other mitzvah, let's say there's a mitzvah to put on uh, tefillin. The Sakana, you don't put on tefillin. Because pikuach nefesh, if it's in danger, you don't have to do the mitzvah. So, where do we find this concept? That the Chazal tell us the mitzvah is Pirsu Manas. Pesach Beis of Achuz, you have to light it in the house, outside. Bishas Sakana, when it's a time of Sakana, you should light it, a pest, you should light it, Bishulchane, you light it inside your house, the diet, that's sufficient enough. So we see that there is, even though it has to do with Pirsu Manas, something about Hanukkah allows it for, to, to say that there's a mitzvah to light it over here, but there's also a way to do it. Out the Christmas. What's Mashasa Sakana, which is actually the way the minig of Chassidim generally, Eastern European Chassidim, is to light, to light inside the house, not a Pesach Beis Mechutz, it's not a light outside. Why? Because Mashasa Sakana can also mean, according to the Ritva, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's Mashasa Sakana that it's danger because of persecution, but it can also mean some type of danger like it going out, that there's winds. And uh, so maybe you have to. Have a protective glass. So there's no mitzvah. The Rosh says there's no mitzvah to go create a protective glass. Shas Hakana means anytime there's some difficulty of lighting the menorah outside, you can light it in your house. The diet, which comes to a big conversation amongst the Rishonim, and we'll try to unpack this a little further, is the mitzvah pursuim nissa, which you'll see later also, and what you're going to learn is the mitzvah pursuim nissa to reveal the miracle. Is it the etzim of the mitzvah of Neres Hanukkah? Which means the idea of Neres Hanak is to light the candles in a way of Pursum or is an additional to, to it? Which means that there's the Iker HaMitzvah. The main part of the Mitzvah is to light the candles. How do you light the candles? That you can also do in many of the You can light it in your house, and that's sufficient enough. And then, additionally, there's also an aspect to it which has the quality of Pursum that You have to light it for the Farsimanes, which would seem to suggest with this according to this Gemara. And interestingly, there's some people that learn, which is a big chiddush, that first of all, the word mitzvah, when the Torah says, when, when, when the Gemara says mitzvah la nichai, when it, it doesn't say, it, it, sound, it suggests that the mitzvah min amufchar, the best possible way to do this mitzvah is to light it actually as a base of But if you don't, it's also good enough if you light it inside your, inside your house. So there's, there's some suggest that originally, originally, the Takanas Chachamim, if you look in the Gemara, where the Gemara says that uh, 
Lashon Acher is Kavu Mosem Yom Yom Toiv and Bahala Boida, that they established the next year the days of Halal Boida, and it doesn't say that they, they established the days to light the candles. So some say that the lighting of the candles was only there for Halal Boida, which we'll see soon, but they actually didn't light it in Pesach Abbas and Lachutz, they didn't light it outside. They maybe lit candles inside their homes. Why? So people should know that it's Hanukkah, that it's celebrating Halal Boida, that something happened to miracles. But they didn't light it in Pesach Abbas and Lachutz because it was already, there was a menorah in the Beis Amikdash. So they didn't light it. So the Iker Takana really, it's a Chazar, the Iker Takana, by lighting inside the house. Mm -hmm. That's possible. Anyways, but the real question is, the real question is, why do we find by Hanukkah the idea of Pirsu Manas? Now, it's not the only month that we find Pirsu Manas, we'll see soon. But why do we find specifically in Hanukkah that there's something about Hanukkah that tells us that we have to light the candles in a way that has to be Pirsu Manas? Why is Pirsu Manas to reveal the miracle so inherently connected to Hanukkah? That so much so that according to the mitzvah, according to the, certainly according to the better way of lighting the candles, you have to do that as Pirsu Manas. Why do we need Pirsu Manas? Now, there is some Rishonim, which is brought down also, that say that if a person comes home at night, late at night, for example, and there's no one up in his home, or her home, because both a man and a woman are really used to light candles, and there's no one up in their house, there's no longer people on the street, and there's no one up, you're not allowed to light with a bracha. Because it's the whole idea of Hanukkah is to light with a piercing my nest, which means that according to the Rishonim, which is brought on la halacha, that's not the halacha, you're not allowed to make a bracha. Even though the Mishnah Buddha says if you really want, you could make a bracha, even though the Suffolk bracha is lacha, generally. We don't say you, you're allowed to make a bracha when you're not supposed to, but with Hanukkah, because if you want to make a bracha, you could. But the idea is that according to certain Rishonim, you're not allowed to make a bracha, which means that the Iker, the, the main idea of Hanukkah, of lighting the candle, certainly has to do with piercing my nest. So the question is, why do we find Hanukkah such an important thing that when we light the candles, it has to do with piercing my nest? We have also Pirsa Manas, the Gemara says that you do with, with the four cups of wine. The Gemara says it's a form of Pirsa Manas. That on Pesach night, when you drink four cups of wine, it's a way of Mephiris Manas, also way of expressing the Nes, even though it's locally in your home. You also have the laws with Megillah. The law of Megillah is like this. It's a Mechlekes, the Gemara brings on a Megillah. It's Mechlekes, the Rav, and Rabasi. The Rav says, according to the Rav, Mitzvah, the Megillah, Bismana. In its time, you can read it be echidus alone. Shalay bezmana, in the night in its time, which means if you read the Megillah and you're all of your days in the Gimel, which are days if you're living in the outside outside of the cities, which they would make, they would read the Megillah before the actual day of Purim. So if you read it outside, you have to have ten basar. Rasa says no, bein bein bezmana, bein shalay bezmana, you have to do basar. You need to ten people. Why? Because beroif am hadis malach. And it says, Chosh Rav Lomzeir, the Rav also was careful according to Lomzeir, but according to Basket, everyone agrees, La Halacha, that if you read the Megillah, on Purim alone, let's say you come home at night, or by day, maybe the Ikri Mitzvah is by day, you come home by day, and you didn't hear the Megillah, you have a Megillah in front of you, you can read the Megillah for yourself. No, no questions asked. You certainly can make a bracha for yourself to make, read the Megillah. But by Hanukkah, there's a svara to say, there's a, there's, a, there's a way to think that says you're not allowed to. So why Hanukkah is not the idea of Pirsu Manas? Why do you have to not do Pirsu Manas? You mean by Hanukkah, it's not the kind of Pirsu Manas for yourself. Correct, yeah. correct. And there will be so much so that according to Sittin Roshayim, you're actually not yet to the mitzvah. So there's something about, you need Pirsu Manas. So that type of Pirsu Why is that so important? So the truth is, the, the Pashtun, the reason why we can say, the very simple reason why we should say that Hanukkah needs Pirsu Manas, is if you also look at the Rambam. The, Ra the Rambam, in Perik Bay's, I'm sorry, Perik Gimel is Hanukkah. He starts off, he starts off saying, He starts giving the whole narrative. What's the story of Hanukkah? There was a story, there was the Greeks, and they persecuted the Jewish people. So he gives the whole sequence of the events that led up to the Hanukkah story which is very unusual for the Rambam. Why does the Rambam give us the history? In Megillah, in the laws of Purim, he doesn't give us the history. In the laws of Pesach, he doesn't say the story of what happened when Kali so left at Messiah. But in the laws of Hanukkah, he does give us the, the, the whole history of, of going out of, of what happened in the story, of the narrative why we celebrate Hanukkah. Why is it important for the Rambam to, to bring this halacha? The reason is, because the Rambam writes in the beginning, in his Akdama, in his introduction to the Sefer, he writes, 
that if you read my book, you don't have to read only, you only have to read Tanakh, and you're, you're good. You read Tanakh and my Sefer, and my book and the Rambam, you're going to know everything you have to do. Comes along a person and says, I read through the entire Tanakh. Doesn't say the Hanukkah. Hmm. So I don't have to celebrate Hanukkah. Comes the Rambam and says, okay, so since you're only reading Tanakh, and it doesn't say anywhere else in Tanakh about Hanukkah, because why? Because the story of, of the Hanukkah happened post Kisra Kodesh. After already, there was the conclusion of Chadal Kisra Kodesh. After already, the conclusion of it became canonical text, it was over. So comes along the Rambam and says, okay, so I'm going to have to tell you about the laws of Hanukkah. Right? I'm going to have to tell you the history of Hanukkah, so you're not going to know why Hanukkah. Why do we celebrate Hanukkah? That's the Pashtus. The reason why you need Pirsimanes. So why do you need Pirsimanes? Why do you have to reveal, why in Hanukkah more than Purim you have to reveal the story of the miracle? Because you don't know the miracle. In, in, in the Pesach, everyone knows, you read the Chamesh Nebuch, everyone reads the Torah, knows that the story of the Sees Messiah. If, if everyone knows the story of, of the Megillah, everyone knows the story of Purim because he's read the Megillah. But not everyone knows the Torah Shabbat. So therefore, we have to move faster than this for the people that don't know. This is what Pashtas may be the reason why Pirsa Manas is so important because you have to tell people, you have to look at something and say, oh, this is reminding of, of the story. So there's another diuk over here in the Rambam, which it seems to say that the Rambam, is, we don't really know what the opinion of the Rambam is, whether he holds Pirsa Manas is inherent in the mitzvah or it's not. But there's a diuk over here because the Rambam writes, there's two, there's two chapters in the Rama. This chapter, Gimel, Peri Gimel, Peri Dalet, chapter three and chapter four. That's the whole halachas of Hanukkah. In chapter three, he writes all the halachas, that's Negea, he writes the story, and the Rama says it was Kavua, they established for the days, he made Halal, and made Halal of Simcha. Rama has a little different version, not Halal of Agdol, but Halal of Simcha. And then he, he, he explains the laws of Halal. The laws of Halal, is brought down in the Rambam and Peir Gimel of Hilchus Hanukkah. Okay, so that's the laws of Hanukkah. That's the laws of Halal. Peir Dalit. How does he start Peir Dalit? Peir Dalit, chapter 4, he starts. Common neighbors from Adel Hanukkah. How many neighbors, how many candles you light in Hanukkah? And he describes how you light the candles of Hanukkah. Which means, chapter 3 deals with the Halal. Chapter 4 deals with lighting candles. Those are the two things you have to do in Hanukkah. You have to say Halal, Halal You have to give thanks. And you have to... You have, to, you have to light the Hanukkah mirror. But in chapter 3, where he speaks about the laws of Halal, so first he gives an introduction. So he says, because of this story, of the story of Hanukkah, the sages of that generation established, from the 25th day of you may Simcha Vahala, should be days of Simcha and Halal, right? and you have to light candles. But then the Rambam adds, the Erev al Pischa Abbatim Cholayla Velayla. You should light the candles on, the, on, the, on your doorstep every evening. Why is the Rambam writing the halacha about lighting on your doorstep? Doorstep is a detail in the lighting of the, in the, lighting of the nair. Lighting of the nair, he only talks about in chapter 4. He, if he wants to say that they established the light of the nair, okay, so they established the light of the nair. Why does it say they established the light of the nair? Al pesal besim bimachutz. That they established the light of the nair on the outside of your home. Why? Because the Rambam is saying, like the other shitta, that Pirsume Nisa, the revealing of the miracle of the lighting of the Hanukkah candles, is inherent part of the mitzvah itself. There's one mitzvah. The mitzvah of lighting candles is for the purpose of revealing the miracle. Ah, you're going to ask, so what does it say that if you, if Bishas Takana, in the time of danger, you can light in your house, the Dayai? That's a separate Takana. Two different Takanas. Two, two, two separate halachas. One halacha is you light the candles. The way it's correctly done, and then you yoitz in the midst also pursue And then there's a separate takana, a separate takana, a separate idea that you can light the candles in such a situation where you can't do pursue then you can light the candles in your home and it's good enough. Okay, that's going to be the shit sarama. But the the oymik of the question still exists. Why? This I'm sorry. So the answer to the question is that the Rama was basically explaining why we need pursue manas, right? You need a pursue manas because to reveal the miracle. Mamish, hold for one second. Let me just finish this idea about the question. But then there's a, there's a little bit of a little bit of a deal over here. Let's go a little deeper over here. The Gemara says, the 
Gemara says that the Ner Chanak was Adif, if we should light the first candles, it's because <coughs> of Shukr Sumen Isra. So the Rajma says that Kishachor Rosh Chodesh Tevis, the Shabbos. When you have Rosh Chodesh Tevis on Shabbos, which is Shabbos Hanukkah, and it's Rosh Chodesh. Yesh lo haftir b'neir z'zachariah. You should, the haftarah should be the haftarah of z'zachariah. Right? Mishum pirsum enisim. Because it's pirsum enisim. So you should not read the nevuah of z'zachariah, which we read, we read yesterday. The nevuah of z'zachariah, which talks about the neiris. He saw a candelabra, a menorah, a shit of neiris. He saw the seven candles. So he says you should read that because that has pursuit in this. Then, then the place continues like this. He says, A kriya satoira Says like this. The Kiyos of Torah ain't called Kach Pirsum Enisa. He says, but you have also Pirsum Enes by reading the Torah. The 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 the. the um, no, you read the Rosh Chodesh, right? Okay. So Rosh Chodesh is going to be a reading in the in the Kriya. You read about Rosh Chodesh, but on Hanukkah we also have the re the Kriya of the Nesia, right? And every day of Hanukkah, you read the Rishon, you read the plays of Hanukkah, you read the Karbanos that were for Hanukkah some is bad. right? So Toisa says that reading the Karbanos, the offerings that were brought in Hanukkah some is bad, is not considered pursuing in Nisa. Only, only, only the Kiyos Hatayr Eimah called pursuing Nisa she'ena masker but neiros, because because you're not masker neiros, because you don't mention the word neiros, candles, in the Kriya. There's no pursuit in this. I have a very simple question. Hmm. In Zechariah, you mentioned Nairus. Zechariah has a prophecy that he sees Nairus. Nothing to do with Hanukkah. Yeah. Right? It's seven. And it's seven. That's considered pursuit in this. But if you read Hanukkah Samizbeach, the Kriya Satoya, Hanukkah Samizbeach, that's not pursuit in this. Why? Just because you mentioned the word Nairus, it becomes pursuit in this. So it's a, it's like, it's a Nairus, 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 Zer Shava. Because you say the word candle, so automatically, that's already considered pursuit in Nisa. So if you read the the, Shabbat, the, the, the regular re reading for Hanukkah, that's not that's not considered pursuit in Nisa. Pursuit in Nisa is only if you mention the word Neiros. So it comes out from places. Kum tois. Places are saying that there's something about just mentioning Neiros that is inherently connected to 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 uh, to uh, pursuit in Nisa. You have to mention the Neiros. Because there's another little deal. If you look in the Tyson Chavdal, it says also a place. <coughs> says, the Gemara asks a question. If you like, you should be masked Hanukkah the Rukh Samazin. The Gemara says, the Tfil of Shitale the mask from the Tfil's Bitsiver who the Ike Persumanissa. You should certainly, if the question is if you do during benching, you should also say Alanisim, or only say Alanisim when you're daven. So the Taisa says you should certainly say when you're daven because it's Pirsuma Nisa. Pirsuma what ness? When you read the Alanisim. When you're reading the Alanisim. What does it say in Alanisim? You ever read Alanisim? Does it talk about the ness of the Shaman? Wait a second, beside that. Wait a second. Besides the Ligna and Hashem, what does it say? What does it talk about the Ness? It talks about. It talks about a battle of war. It doesn't mention the miracle of the Shem. Nothing about the Neir Shem. It does say. The Ligna is Bechatz Kachacha. The Ligna is Bechatz Kachacha means they lit many candles Bechatz Kachacha, which most people say. The Ligna is Bechatz Kachacha doesn't refer to the Neir of the Shem. Of the base of English, otherwise, what it said, the, the, and they found the Tirus, the Timu Kalashman, the Dlikum, the Mayor Echot, the Hidlik, the Shmane Yaman, 
They did come to Chazka Shech, and some Sofer says it's also his Pashtas. Vim Chazka Shech, they made a celebration. And they lit candles. The derech of people to make, to make a celebration. They were victorious in war. The Gemara says in Gitman, when people were victorious in war, they used to light candles. So some Sofer says that's what they did. They lit, they lit, they lit, they lit, they lit up the whole Chazka Shech, the whole Beis Amigdash with candles. Yet, let's take this assumption of Lignan Chazka Shech is not referring to the, the nares of the menorah. So what is it, again, we have it from places, what, 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 what the places are saying, is the fact that we mention Neiris is already presumanism. Even if Neiris Chatzkotrach has nothing to do with the Neiris of Beis Amikdash that was inside of, in the, in the, in the Kodesh, it's still the fact that you mention Neiris, Neiris is connected, connected to presumanism. Why? What does Neiris have to do with presumanism? And why do we dafke use Neiris to, to do presumanism? Why dafke Neiris? So we have to understand something a little more oimek, which we started learning about. What is the idea of tsnias? What is the idea of pirsum? What does it mean to be tsanua? Something to be to be modest. It's the, it's the translation of the word. It's not the correct translation, but it's a translation. What does it mean tsanua? So you'll see soon. It says The Basik says you should walk humbly tsanua in Hashem lekecha. So the Gemara says in Sukkah, the Gemara says in, and the Makkas, the Gemara says that what does this refer to? That a person should walk with sneas. So you have pirsum is to reveal, to be exposed. Sneas means to be tsanua, means to be modest, means to be inward more. So the Gemara says that what is the definition of a person that's tsanua? What's the Hatzan Lechaz Shem Lekecha? This is Haitzah Asames, Achnas Kala. This refers to two mitzvahs. One is the mitzvah of of when a person passes on. So you, you go to his funeral and etc. That, that mitzvah should be done with sneers. And a is called a wedding. A funeral and a wedding should be done with modesty. And the Gemara says, it's a Kabbalah Chayim. It's a, it's a, it's a Kabbalah Chayim. Madach, certainly if it, in these cases where it's usually done with great fanfare and great noise, so over here, you should do it with, with sinah. That's what Rashi writes, if it's if an Yitzhah Sames, a funeral. Or a chasana, which generally is done with a lot of noise. You should say, the Gemara says you should do it with sinah. It's not Hashem you should do it quietly or modestly. So kol shakei in a mitzvah, that you should generally do it with sneeze. You should certainly do it in a way of sneeze without piercing. Why dafka these two things? So the pastas, these two things is what were done, not only were they done is a, is a loud event, but also done with music. In the times of Chazal, we know the Gemara says in Ksuvis, it comes, it, 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 it seems clear, that in, and also the Gemara in that in the times of Chazal, by a funeral, they used to play music. They used to create like a type of music that made people cry, that that people that were meant to cry, and to create a lot of noise, a lot of sound. A chasen is called chasen, called simcha. We know by chasen has a lot of sound, and also a sound, a lot of noise. So the Gemara says that things that are done very noisy should be done very quietly. But yes, it's a little bit more boiling. There's an interesting thing that, that's a parallel between a funeral and a wedding. With a funeral, we, we learned this last time, with a funeral, one of the things that it has to be done, certainly if the person is a Tam you have to be a Hespit, right? The idea of to, get, to give a hespid, to give a eulogy. The eulogy, the hespid, is Yaakov the Chaya, Yaakov the Mesa, but there's definitely an idea that you have to give a hespid, you, you have to speak about the nifter. You have to use speech. Speech is giloy, to reveal. The same thing also with Avelis. The same thing also with the Chasim. The Gemara says, That the Gemara says about a chasana, agad ve'elul. The Gemara says in brachas agad ve'elul milu. That the the agra, the the benefit, the schar, the reward of a wedding is milu, a speech. So by a, by a velus, what do you do? A person passes on, and you make a hesped. What do you do? You, you speak about the person. You say this person is such a wonderful person, and they did so much. They accomplished so much, so much things in their life. You're revealing about this person's quality. You're using the koyach adibur, the power of speech, which is revelation, and you're revealing the quality of this person. The Gemara says, "Agdei lulamila." 
So Rashi says, You have to mesameach the chasim to, to make the chasim happy with words. What kind of words? Words of praise of the kala. So you stand up by a wedding and say, by the way, this, this kala, this, this, this bride that you married is kala nova chasuda, so she's such a wonderful girl, etc., etc. And you speak about the maila, the, the, the beauty of this person. So it, it, there's a parallel. Here's when a person dies. You speak about it, and it's yakir the mesa. It's actually this, the mess receives pleasure from a person saying, look at this person, what they accomplished in this world. This is a person's funeral. And at a wedding, you also do the same thing. You're speaking about the qualities of this person. Which is unusual. This is the two times in life where there's a mitzvah to speak about the person's qualities, positively to positively speak about these person's qualities. Now, so maybe this is what the oymik of pshat is. Hatzalach as Hashem lekecha. The Gemara is saying that a person has to be a hatzalach. That when you speak about something, there's two ways that to speak. The speech generally, what is speech? Speech is there, reveals. When you speak, you're revealing. What type of, re- what type of revealing is there? So there's two types of speech. There's a, there's a, there's a person that speaks, it's a hoylech rachel, and they take their whole pnimi, their whole internal, and they speak it out in the they, they Their speech is, is, a, is an emptying of the self in, in, the, in, the, in the exposure of the self to the outside, the total exposure of the self to the outside. That's one form of speech. That's not sneers. That's piercing. Or that's just, just piercing. What's the speech that has sneers? The speech that has sneers is that, you know, they say that the, the words were created to, to conceal man's thoughts. Mm-hmm. That the idea of the speech is you're revealing, but by the, by the fact that you're revealing, you're actually concealing even more. You reveal one to, to, to conceal two. It's almost like you're revealing, sometimes a person reveals something, they say that, in Sadiqim, they said that he was, he was a tzaddik nister because he, he was he, he was he hid in his miracles. He hid in his publicity. In his, in, his, in his exposure of himself, he actually hid. How is he hiding? He's hiding by revealing a certain facade of his personality, which is the chitzoyness of him the external aspect of himself, to conceal something that's even deeper. So the, 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 the revealing is actually a concealing. And the concealing is a revealing. This is the, the, the deeper that's, that's a revealing of something that's mysterious, that's still allowing for the mystery, for the panemi to be, to be held sacred and not to be revealed. There's a Gemara, the beginning of Esau Yitzhar, the Yosef Engel writes like this. There's a Gemara that says, the Gemara in Sanhedrin, Nafun Ches says like this: Other chavim she Shabbos chayiv misa. Other chavim, an idol worshiper that keeps Shabbos, is liable by that. Other chavim, an idol worshiper, the Oisim Gatayer is chayiv misa. My Rosh Hakim is Yaakov. He's this person is mechayiv misa. Why? So the Marsha asks. Why these two mitzvahs? Shabbos and Torah, if an Oyvah Gechavim keeps these two mitzvahs, the Mokhiv is, why not get these two mitzvahs? What is special about these two mitzvahs? What's specifically about these two mitzvahs? So this angle says like this. It's going to be founded on a maral. And uh, when he starts with the Gemara, the Gemara says like this, two things about Shabbos and Torah. The Gemara says in Beit, the Gemara says, "Call a mitzvah shenit l'am b'farhasya, call mitzvah shenit l'am b'farhasya, chutz b'shabbos." All the mitzvahs are given openly, besides Shabbos. Shabbos is given b'tzina, <coughs> is given private. As it says, "Beini yovei minei yisrael, oisiv l'olam." It's a beini yovei minei yisrael. Something that's private, a private communication. The same thing also the Gemara says in Sanhedrin that the reason why the Torah is called Shia. Shinit b'chashoyim. The Torah was called. It's called Teshia. Gives strength. This also comes from the word b'chashoyim, which means it's given secretly for the sultan not to hear. It says the Rishonim like this. The Gemara says in Chulim, which the Maral quotes in the Sivas in the Sivas Olim in the Sivas Shtika. The 
where Arya brings it down a few times. Stam oivik kachavim mifa poiv. Stam oivik kachavim. Idol worshippers speak, blabber. So first, my first instinct was, what pshat? What stam oivik kachavim mifa poiv? So the Maral says because the oivik kachavim has no pnimi, there's no internal, so everything's externalized always. Mifa poiv means the soul doesn't have a secret. No, there's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing secret inside. There's no inner. And there's no inner, it's always expression of Adam. So why not go Oyvim Chavim? So my, my thought was, because Oyvim Chavim, what does Oyvim Chavim mean? Oyvim Chavim means someone that worships an image. Someone that worships an object and sees the object as an end in itself. When you, when you look at something and you see this is the end in itself and you don't see that there's a deeper mystery. If you look at this world and you say, in this world there's a kus. There's something divine, there's a hidden divine aspect, there's a mystery. There's a pnimi that's not being revealed. Then you're you're makushik, Then you're connecting yourself to something pnimi. The definition of oivik kechavim or idol worshiper is someone that's oivik the chitzayni. And then I saw he, the Bereshit writes in Agdama. This is on my door. You have to see it. It's very, very interesting. I'll show you the page. He writes on my door before a sefer. It's a whole long sefer. What does he write on my door? My door is like a holy shnavim. Any wise person should understand. He call Hashem as Akum. You should know that any time I mention the word Akum in this book, Akum doesn't mean non-Jew. Akum means idol worshippers of all. And they didn't know Hashem. They served idols. Like in the Amish, it was named Oydin the Boyer Echad, nice and covered with Rasa, a little Dabra Lane Shum Gnai. He says, he makes a Maida before a Sefer, I guess he talks a lot about Akum and throughout the Sefer, that he says Akum doesn't refer to Nanju, Akum means the person that's an Iron worshiper. And this is actually what, he's, what we're saying. The definition of somebody that's connected to the external is a Mifu Pai. Mifu Pai means a person that has no inner life. Bathroom. As a blabber, a blabber. Why is a person a blabber? Because there's, not, there's nothing going on internally. There's no pnimi. Now, if a person is, his speech is connected, if there's a person that has sneers, a person that has sneers is a person that reveals and conceals simultaneously. It's revealing a certain level, but simultaneously it's also concealing an even deeper level. Let's go back to Hanukkah. Yeah? There's connection with Akum and Shabbos. Oh, oh sorry, I'm sorry. He doesn't hear the. So Shabbos is Pnimi. Shvis of Medivra. Yeah, Shvis of Medivra. So, yeah, yeah, correct. And Shabbos is the Pnimi. So I don't know. Is, is the Pnimi. It's the Pnimi. So you're talking about the world of Pnimi. Someone that exists in the world of the external that tries to connect himself to the world of the eternal ceases to exist. It's not that they die, they get killed, because your, your existence is only external. If you try to connect with something internal, you don't exist. So, Akr Shashavas, Chayim Misa, not Chayim, it becomes Misa. There is no existence for this type of being. It's hard to say that a person doesn't have a Pnimi, but we're saying that a person, we'll see soon the way culture is, and we'll see how this works in, in today's life. With Hanukkah, there's another interesting thing. Mitzvah Sayyim, every, every Yom Tev has a Mitzvah Sayyim, has a, has a Mitzvah of the day. Purim has a Mitzvah of the day, Pesach has a Mitzvah of the day, Lul of Nasser, Sukkot has a Mitzvah of the day. It's called Mitzvah Sayyim. Mitzvah Sayyim is Shaifer. On Rosh Hashanah, there's a Mitzvah of Lul Shaifer. When the Mitzvah Sayyim of a holiday, of a Yom Tev is, when do you do the Mitzvah? Bayayim. Mitzvah Sayyim is Shaifer. When do you blow the Shaifer? Bayayim. Mitzvah Zayyim is Lulav and Asik. When do you hear Lulav and Asik? When do you blend Lulav and Asik? Bayayim. Megillah. When is the Iker Mitzvah of Megillah? Toysis says, if you look at Toysis, that, that the Iker Chiyov, that's how you make Shechiyon again by day, the Iker Chiyov, when you have the Sudas Yamtiv, when you get to the Sudas Yamtiv, when you give the Sholach Manas and Mutanas Yonim, and, 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 Bayayim. You're not Yonim if you give a night. The mission says, but we're Ah, so look at Toysis there. Loy the Miyali means that I'm not going to be quiet also by night. Look at Toysis, that's what, that's, 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 that could be more. It's mitzvah, it's mitzvah, bayoim is bayoim. The one time after you actually you have mitzvah hayoim balayla, 
The mitzvah of the day is by night. Where is Pesach? Pesach is an anomaly of all the Yom Tovim. The mitzvah sayom is actually Balayla. The mitzvah of, keeping the, of having the Seder, and eating the Chilus Matzah, and more, etc., is Balayla. And the girl, and all, the, all of many of Shalom asked the Shaila, how could the mitzvah sayom, mitzvah sayom is Bayom? So why is mitzvah sayom Balayla? So the Teretz is, the answer for why Pesach is mitzvah sayom Balayla, by Balayla is because Laila Kuyam Yor. Because by Pesach is Laila Kuyam Yor, like you say, Manishtana Halayla Zeh. Laila is feminine, Loshan Mekeva. Hazeh is Loshan Zacher. And the question of Manishtana Laila Zeh is, Taka, why is this night male? Because male represents day, female represents night. And tonight, on Pesach night, you do a mitzvah, which is like day. So, manishtana halayla zeh. Why is layla today hazeh? Therefore, we eat, we eat matzah by layla. But that's unusual. Chanukah is the one time that we say it's taka night. And mitzvah yoyim is by night. The mitzvah of lighting the camels is by night. So, you're going to say, okay, simple reason why you do it by night is because that's when the miracle happened. The miracle happened by night. Love Dafka. No. Love Dafka happened by night. They lived, right. They lived uh, by day. Oh, because to- Rash, the Rambam holds that when did they come into the Hegel, like the Lashon Gemara, like the Gemara says, when did they come into the Hegel? On the 25th day of Kislev. They came on the 25th day of Kislev and they found a jug of oil and they lit it. When, when did they light it? If they lit it on that night, that night is very Chavov. It's 26. Because we count the nights. So take a kachin, a kachin, you say, but let's put that aside. Simply, they live on the 26th day. So Hanukkah is on the 26th day. Why is it signed on the 25th day? So they answer according to the Rambam. By the way, there's, there's a shita, the Meiri. The Meiri has a different gear, so it says actually Chavdalah. And that answers the question. They came to Chavdalah, so they live by night Chavdalah. But according to the Rambam, they came on 25. They lived on 25, it's already came, they lived, it was already 26. But they're small, they live the day. Oh, so why do you need a whole cheshbon? The 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 and if you have a problem that you can't reveal the miracle, so uh, eat latkes to remember the miracle. <laughs> eat a lot of oil to remember the miracle of the oil. You have a problem that you want to light the menorah and the menorah has to be by night, stay light it by night. It doesn't make any sense. If you want to do the mitzvah by yom, by yom, so do it by yom. So there must be something more bohemic. Yavon. The, 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 Medish, the beginning of the Medish Rav and the beginning of the Torah says that the Choshech of Pnei HaTuchoyim Choshech, darkness, is Yavon. I have to understand this. The darkness is Yavon. Bukhur, Yavon is not darkness. Yavon is dafka light, exposure. It's the body, it's the, it's the exposed body. It's. But this is what the Medish says. The Choshech is connected to Yavon. There's a, also the desire, the desire chadash and noach, the kun desire, which is interesting. It talks about that. By he beis her with the yoyna, by yishu chasay yoyna, noach sends away the yoyna, and the yoyna the yoyna comes back into the teva. So the met, the desire says that the, the teva represents the beis hamikdash. The first one is the first that they left the beis hamikdash and was destroyed, and the second one is they came back. The noach pulled them back and built the teva, and he built the second beis hamikdash. But he lays Erev, the Yonah comes back, but doesn't come back. The base of English doesn't get rebuilt. He doesn't go back into the base of English. He comes with Ali Zayas. The Ali Zayas, he comes with, with, uh, with an olive leaf. So the Zohar Kaddish says that this represents Hanukkah's Torah. Mm-hmm. That Klal Yisrael was saved at this point with the oil of the Hanukkah story to counter the Ace Erev of the Choshech of the Yavonim. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what's the idea of the, the, what's the concept? So if Hanukkah comes to contrast the Yavana, which is Choshech, Le'eser, the idea by night, to contrast that idea by night, we light a candle. We have oil. And the oil is there 
to, to, to illuminate, to, to, to push aside the darkness of the Cheshit of, of, of the Ivana. Why Dafka candles? Because Pearson, we said that the idea of Pearson, if a person is totally exposing himself, there's no plimi. Right? It means that there's just an exposure full of self, there's no plimi. An idea of the revealing is to reveal that there's a plimi, and to conceal, to reveal and conceal simultaneously. What is the nature of a flame? The nature of a flame is that it allows, when you put a flame into a room, let's say a candle, what does the flame do? The flame allows everyone to see whatever, where everything belongs. So the, the, the point of a flame, fire, even though the concept of the, of the flame is that it allows everyone to see what, ha- what everything belongs in its proper place. The, the, the attention that the flame gets is not for itself. The, the flame doesn't demand attention for itself. The, the, the attention that the flame demands is so you can look at something else. The metzias of the flame is, says, I am only here to show you something else. I'm here to allow you to see that there's a chair here. I'm here to allow you to see there's a table there. Mm. Which means that it's a piercing, again, there's one type of piercing, which is the exposure of self completely revealed into the external world. You take whatever is sacred inside you, and you completely expose yourself to the outside. That is a negative type of piercing. That means that there is, there's nothing sacred, there's nothing pimi that's ever, ever revealed. That's a type of deep word that's mifopoi, it's blabbering. You just expose yourself, everything became outside. But there's another type of pirsum that's a pirsum of tzina, of tzniyas. It's, it's a revealing that's concealing. It's, and and the, the, the object that's being revealed is saying, I'm here to reveal for others. And even for myself, I'm not, I'm not really revealing myself. And the point of my, my revealing is actually to reveal that something else deeper. The Gemara says, the Gemara Saito says about Miriam. The Gemara Saito says about Miriam that a person, that Miriam was one of the beautiful, beautiful people, beautiful women in the world. And it says that Aroya Miriam, someone that, a man that sees Miriam, may be Aroya the Ishtar. Brings a gift to his wife. So Eshlok says, What pshat? You see Miriam and you bring a gift to his wife. He says, This is the oimik of the sneez. What's sneez? Sneez doesn't mean you're covering yourself. It's because sometimes people are covering themselves and that's how they're revealing most of themselves. And sometimes people are revealed and like they're concealed. It's not, it's not how much a person is wearing or what they're wearing. Sneez, the concept of tsnua and pirsum is, is the revealing of the self to attract attention to the self or is the revealing of the self to attract attention to others like a nair the attention of the nair is to reveal that there's an other is the attention for the self that's, that's the opposite of snua if a person is provocative and the purpose of the, of the provocation is to draw attention to the self to make themselves exposed to the outside that's the opposite of snua when someone sees Miriam maybe die on the ishtoy it actually makes him be closer to his wife. Not to Miriam. He's, Miriam is the candle that points out that there's beauty in his wife. So he brings a gift to his wife. This is the, the idea of the piercing for the tznua. The opposite of this is actually Chayshuk of Yavon. What is the Chayshuk of Yavon? The body. Olympics. Like we said a few times, but now I finally figured out the pack of the... the What's the gematria? The gematria of internet, Aleph Yud Nun Tav Resh Tes, is gematria of 329 like Chaysha. It's darkness. What is the internet? What is this concept of the, the life that we're living now in the modern world? How much can I expose myself to the outside world? How much could people know about what I had for lunch or for supper or for, for breakfast? This is the Klippus Yavam. This is the biggest Chaysha. This is the biggest darkness. When, when people are not living any sacred space for themselves. And this is what the Oyer of Hanukkah is. The Oyer of Hanukkah, the piercing of the Oyer of Hanukkah, is to say that my light is here to point to something that's higher, to point to something that's deeper. And no matter how much I'm revealing, 
how much I'm being ex exposing myself, the exposure is 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 megala tefach and and it's constantly even concealing even much something that's much deeper. This the nakedness of, of klipa, the nakedness of klipas yavam is chayshe, because you're left with nothing. There's nothing there. It's mitzvah point. There's a complete emptying out of the self into the into the outside world. There is there's nothing holy and there's nothing sacred. There's nothing pnimi any any longer. And this is why Chazal tell us that the mitzvah to counter the chayshech of Yavlam, the mitzvah that was given to us through the miracle of, of Hanukkah, which is to counter the chayshech of the darkness of Yavlam, is dafke the mitzvah of Ner Hanukkah, not Shemin, but specifically Ner, specifically a candle, and specifically a candle of Farsam Asanes. The point of the, mir of the Nes says, and this is actually the way we say this in Hanayr Salalu, Hanayr Salalu Kodeshev, we have no, we have no utilitarian need of this this candle. So what do we need this candle for? The whole purpose of the candle is to make me thank something that's beyond me. I'm looking at this thing and saying, I'm not. It's not you. You are there to show me something that's higher. The expression and the tool that allows us to to mahalo, to be is through the candle dafka. So this is where you can understand a little bit why Hanukkah is dafka mitzvah halayla in the chayshah, mitzvah yoy malayla is balayla in the night, and why it's dafka pirsamanes is revealing the miracle, and why the pirsamanes is with this object. If Kaviyachol if Chazal were to tell us that to, to reveal the miracle we have to eat latkes, people would get caught in the latke. And they would do the period, they would do the the, the the exposure of the indulgence would be with the object itself, with the image itself. The only image that, that is both exists and points to something that's higher, that's both tangible, and doesn't exist simultaneously is fire. When you look at the person, so even if you have an object, say the, the mitzvah of, of Pirsum and S would be through this, this specific object. If it's not in there, you always have the problem that you become stuck on that image. So it's specifically through the nair, and it's specifically through the pirsum, which reveals And that's why at Hanukkah we light a candle, and that's why we have to do pirsum. Now we can understand what the idea of pirsum is. Then when Chazal said we have to do mefarsum and as, the idea of pirsum in general, we're going to see later this idea of from the Trubas Arashba, mitzvah of Farsim Oysa Mitzvah. There's a mitzvah to a Farsim, a person gets stuck and should put their name on the building. This is the, this is the Rajma writes. Because the, the Pearson is not for the self. It's for many, many years of Chayn Yasu because other people will be inspired to do it. If you're doing Pearson to attract the attention to yourself, then you're Chayshach. That's, that's Yavim. If you're doing pirsum to inspire other people, to be a candle to, to, to reveal lohaydas alahalos so people can express betterness and goodness and closeness to Hashem because of you, then it's then it's an intention. That's what Hanukkah is about. Would you connect that to the form of pirsum, the negative form, ayin hara? Yeah. 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 That's the idea. Of, that's the name. Ayin hara is the exposure, the full self, for no for the intention of, of the self. We spoke about this once about Yosef, Yosef yeah. Atzadik. That Yosef Atzadik is the opposite of Ayn Hara because Yosef Atzadik, his look at people looked at him, and the whole purpose of Yosef, yeah. we didn't. This is another thing we spoke about this last week. You weren't here. That the whole purpose of Yosef is another chiddush. Yosef, his mitzias, his being is Yosef Li Hashem Ben Acher. His whole mitzias is Acher. His whole existence is I'm here for somebody else. Vuhoyeroyes Echav B'Tzayin. He was a subservient to his brothers. His, his existence is that I'm only here to be a conduit for someone else. I'm not here for myself and my own glory. And that's, by the way, the Shalom Kaddish writes, that's the, really, the real argument between the brothers and Yosef, is they thought he wanted Melucha. They thought he wanted to be Yehuda. And Yosef says, I never wanted to be Yehuda. I only, I only wanted to be the Mishnah Lamelech. I always wanted to be someone that leads you to Yehuda. I want to be Mashiach ben Yosef that brings you to Mashiach ben David. They thought he was being the Pharisee himself. Correct. They thought he was the Pharisee himself, and, and it was the it was Mamish the opposite. Yeah. yeah. So how do we go back to the Rambam now? How does it fit in with the Rambam? 
Which are what? Perik Imo and Perik Da. The, the Pesach Pesach. Pesach. No, because the, the, the Ramu Shitta is that the Nairs Hanukkah, why was it Dafka in Nairs? Why, why specifically in Nairs? Because Nairs is Pearson. Nairs is the perfect medium for Pearson. And that's why they, it has to be a Pesach Pesach. That is part of the mitzvah. It's not like it's not, there's no Hanukkah without the Pearson. Ha, according to the Rambam, the Nairs Hanukkah and Pearson Manes is one and the same thing. And the Metzias of Nair's Hanukkah is Pearson. The whole idea of the Nair is to reveal something else. That's, that's the idea of Pearson. So that's what Toysus means. That, oh, that's right. That's the answer to Toysus. That's that, what was the question of Toysus. Why does Toysus say Nairs? Right. Why Dafka Nair is Pearson? Because the, the, exactly. the quality of Pearson is directly related to Nair. That's important. We have to understand that Toysus. If you read... Shabbos, Hanukkah, or Hanukkah, the, the Karbonus, it's not Pearson. It's, it's, it's Mepharsim that is Karbonus, but it's not Mepharsim that something is beyond it. Ner says, I look at you and I want to see something that's beyond you. Right, well, you could also say that in the Pearson that is in Karbonus, there's like Pe'ilu, like a Yeshus. Yeah. That could be. Could be directed to itself. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it could be. You could say, wow, carbohydration, this was the dust. So you're attracted to the thing itself. Yeah. The concept of a nair is I'm not here for myself. I'm here to point to something else for something higher. Uh, but it seems that there is a doubling of the auditory and the visual in Pearson because we have doubling of both Hallel and the Roth and Hanukkah, yeah. which is speech and light. Uh, mm-hmm. My question here is would you say that? Speech accomplishes Pearson in a different way than Nair. Mm. And oh. Nair is what accomplishes Pearson because I see them as complementary. One cannot go without the I other. I think that's what, Ramo, that's what we're saying in the, in the, in the, in the liturgy. Ella Kedei Lahoida is verbally. Right. In other words, the, the visual, the, the visual, if you look in the Ramo, it's also. You can make a deal. I'm mean, just exactly. saying now, the only that that we need a tool to bring us to a place of lohedus laal. Okay, there's a mitzvah you should lohedus laal. How do you do it? What inspires you to lohedus laal? The lighting could be lohedus laal. That's oh, no, no. The lighting kidei lohedus laal. It's not the lighting itself. But the lighting says here, do this act. Is the kidei lohedus laal? If you look at the Diak in the Ramam, you can find this Diak also in the Ramam's language. You may simcha bahalal, umadlik my name is very well people being called the Lailam, Shays of Lailam, Lahar's a Kalas and S. It's you may simcha bahalal, that's the way it was established, right? To say praise. Umadlikim and you light. And there is Arab Pesa, Arab Al Pisca, Bottom of Holaila, Lailam, Mishmaris and Arab Lailam, Lahar's a Kalas and S. And you light to do what? To reveal the miracle. So lahoides lahal what? Lahoides lahal to say the miracles. So you and you light kidei lahoides lahal. Right? You see, in the Rambam you have that same structure, which is the intention of the lighting is not for the intention in itself. The intention of lighting is to evoke the auditory expression right, of speech, and then it's going to be in a way of piercing and sinner. It's going to be piercing and sinner. You're going to, to reveal exactly. to conceal. Right, right, right. Because that kind of speech points to something beyond itself. That's itself, correct. Right? So that's correct. Like, like a nair-like right. speech. But that's, that's correct. Speech. That's, that's so they're right. It's a nair-like speech. But correct. in the language, you don't have qualification. Right? Correct. You cannot have that kind of specificity, uh, specificity without language. So you need both um, to, to kind of complement each other. Uh, one is more of a visual symbol, but it really, if I'm reading this wrong correctly, the visual symbol then kind of loops back, loops back That's into correct. and saying, "Hey, what in the world of speech and idea, in the world of of, of ideas, represents uh, uh, what is represented in the light is this uh, 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 the idea of a how right? Correct. Because on itself, correct. We, we lead this through, correct." And, and it not only it loops back, but it actually it, it creates texture to the way you're going to speak. Right. Because it allows you to speak in a way of tzina and of right. tzniyas and perhaps. What you added was, I mean, I never hopped on that. The flame is a bit, it has vitality to it. It's an unstable, That's correct. unstable That's the nature. thing like speech. 
That's correct. And it can, oh, never, be, it can never be reduced to a fixed object. Correct. That correct. It doesn't have the worry. We don't have the worry right. of becoming a yesh on the tzatzim. Right. That's why Chazal put it, that became right. the perfect medium. And that's the counter of the Greek. The Greek is the exposure, is the Olympic, is the Olympian. The, the, the Greek is the visual, what it is. That, and we worship what that visual is. It's the perfect body, it's the perfect beauty. It's the visual that you're worshiping. Right. And that's Chosha, because that's the total right. taking out of anything Pnimi and saying the only thing that exists is the Chitzainia, That's why it's the so, external. That's why it's so nice to look at fire, because you can look at it and it's, it doesn't, it doesn't imprison you by looking that's at that's it. Right. You know, that's, like that's a good word. That's correct. It all, I wonder if you, maybe not for now, but it, there's a whole connection you can make with with the Lukos and Matantara. The one that top to mind is one that you have the, the, the yeah, the, the polo and the Maraki. That's, that's correct. That. Yeah, that's correct. Correct. So correct. the lightning and stuff correct. Correct. Is, has right. that really exact same ball. Correct. Where it really correct. Is doubling the hair. It flashes and it lights up. Excellent. Up Excellent. So the later with the ball and the later with the ball and like uh, Ramesha de Leon, the Czech Lakoidish, you can turn off that fan. Yes, make a choice. That he writes that the perfect like object to meditate on, if you want to do like, uh, like mm -hmm. higher meditation, is to look at the the, 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 the ripple effect or the the, the, the sunlight mm -hmm. that's being rippled off the pond. The, oh, I agree. He I says because the moment you try to look at it, it disappears. <laughs> I've said that. For, I love. He says because yeah. that's what that's what the whole idea is. You yeah. you get fixed on a picture, and if yeah. you get stuck in it, then you come it comes in itself. You look at something that the, the more you focus on it, the more it disappears. Yeah. And then if he sees it again, then it disappears. It disappears again. Maybe. That's the nature of a flame. Right, but but then he has a question on meditation. Meditation understood as uh, immersion in a sequence of images that are inspiring is utterly wrong. These images should be transcended through the act of meditating. Uh, but always the danger of the visual, the danger of the visual with the story of the breaking of the lotus, is that you get caught in the image and that becomes the end in itself. Because, it only because it's solid. Chitonis. It's chitonis. I mean, it's only on a photonic level. I mean, what do you see? You see the thinnest layers That's of correct. light bouncing back on the but thinnest layers of, of right. objects. But right. it, there's no interiority in vision. But if you, if you pull in what we read from the Spas Emes earlier, it's, it's also saying, like, isn't there an ultimate thing that, it, that, that is the bringing out oh. of the Panemius to yeah. the Antonius? No, so the ultimate, that's why the role called Yeah. In other words, in the ultimate messianic dream, yeah. there's a total merging between the Panemius and the Chitzoni yeah. in a way that when it could be revealed, it can actually be seen. But that's that's a visual that actually can, that we're going to learn later. You'll see soon about this whole thing about the mister, which is is, is what is what is the secret? Why is why is Pnimi Satoya called the secret? Why is it Pnimi? So I told him not to put it in, but there was a shtickle in there from the from the, from the Nefesh Chaim says because it's mister because we because it's not understand. The 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 the, 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 the nikla is what's revealed and can kind of understood, and the Pnimi is something you can't understand. And this is Mamish counter to what the Valsham writes. Valsham writes that, the, that Nister is actually more revealed than Nister. Right. Nister is more revealed than Nister. Everyone throw up on the book and say, everyone can agree. He says it's Nister because it's, it's personal. But that's what it's subjective. It's the heat. Not right. The face. I mean, in other words, that, that's the mystery when there's still a mystery when it's revealed. Yeah. You can read it, it's in a book, it's there, and it's a mystery. That's the ultimate. And I, this, is, this is probably why the. This is why probably, uh, you know, public Hanukkah menorahs, it's, it's, like, it's, there's a shift in consciousness where we're, we're able to, the Pnimi and the Chitsoini in a way that retains the Pnimi and still reveals, reveals it in, without actually becoming completely exposed that it empties itself out. Maybe there's, some, maybe there's just, there's so much there that it doesn't have to, I was just thinking about this the other day. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, we're going to continue on this conversation. This is the foundation.